everyone from Eastern Canada and it's uh, 10 a.m. in the morning here and we want to welcome people from around the world who are joining us I see we have a new Bhakta Jad with us and this is the first time he's watching the live session in full and we're glad you're here in full because our program is an hour and a half long generally. Uh, the other day on Wednesday, we had a, an extended program, which went for almost two hours. And I wanted to comment on the program that we do not uh, practice censorship here. We do qualify people to see if they're compatible with our point of view, which is that we are all Prabhupada disciples uh, or aspiring disciples of Srila Prabhupada. And we accept Prabhupada as our Diksha Siksha guru for everyone. And uh, we do not compromise on that position. But as far as uh, censorship no we don't have censorship and our classes are an open forum now if you look at the invitation that you'll receive uh, you'll you can go through it and see how it's conducted step by step it's laid out in the email that we send out to our guests so that will clear up any confusion if you have and if you do have any questions about our program, you can call us at any time. There's lots of contact information available through the Hare Krishna Society website. You can reach out there. You can get our contact information and call us personally. We're very happy to speak to anyone on any subject, really. And I wanted to mention here that the classes are specifically targeted towards the Shastra, the scriptures. Like today, we're going to be reading from Bhagavad Gita. And we started at the beginning with the introduction, and we've been reading forward. And we're already at the uh, 11th chapter, uh, text 3 and 4 today. And we do make preparation for these classes. And our speaker, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, does prepare a variety of items for us scripturally to uh, get insight into Prabhupada's teachings. Now, you have to realize that one of the most popular topics amongst people that have been a part of ISKCON, the old people, the new people, is all the ISKCON issues that exist, the change books, the gurus and that. And it's a very popular subject. Oh, yes. 
And we could see that in the last class, everybody was got involved in, in the comments se section. But we would request you humbly to try to focus on the scriptures that we're discussing. These topics may come up. Prabhupada does speak about them in terms of how he wanted us to carry on this mission after his departure. And he gives us warnings in all of the books that we study uh, how to proceed according to his instructions. Some of us have been mistreated. Oh, yeah. Some of us have been very disappointed. Some of us have been abused. So there are so many stories that are part of this pastime, transcendental pastime. And we will have different forums where we'll express these points of view specifically. And you'll all be invited to them. We'll send you invitations. We have a lot of items on our agenda already that we're doing. So step by step, we'll bring these things into uh, public discussions. But specifically for the classes, we're going to humbly request everyone, please try to stay focused on the verses, on the readings, and on the discussions philosophically that we uh, present. In Srimad Bhagavatam on Sunday, Chaitanya Charitamrita on Wednesday, and Bhagavad Gita on Saturday. And we'll try to keep it within the time frame of an hour and a half. So sometimes, you know, people, they, they want to speak. And we do apologize if we seem uh, that we just can't accommodate you. We might miss your hand or, you know, we see the time is moving past the allotted time. And like I said, last Wednesday, it went all the way from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. And then I got a message from one of our Prabhus he said, I think it's time to end the discussion. I thought, okay, let me try to get this program, you know, resolved. And then we'll come again because time does march very quickly. And before you know it, Wednesday becomes Saturday, Saturday becomes Sunday. And the next week, Wednesday becomes uh, another scheduled date. And this thing marches on. If you think about it, we're going to have at this pace, we got 52 weeks times three. So that's uh, 52, that's what, 165 programs that we're producing of just these classes. And then we're going to expand our program to include issues on the illicit gurus, the fraudulent bogus GBC resolutions, the change books, the change management system, the changed kirtans. Sure, lots. The banishment of people from their centers because they, people are uh, pointing fingers at them, calling them Ritviks when we're Prabhupada disciples. Oh, you Ritviks, go away. So lots of topics. No question about it. Lots of topics. And we will try to address them, but not specifically in our classes, which are specifically ta targeting the reading of Bhagavad Gita and discussion of the verses by Srila Prabhupada, along with our God brothers, Bhagavata, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Delhi editions, which we do use, which are very ecstatic, and also the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which we're doing from these. I believe it's the 74 version uh, that I have. And uh, so these are specific books that we're using. And this is the target of our readings and discussions. So just keep that in mind. We're going to move forward. We're also reading from Prabhupada's diaries. I was looking at the diaries today. Quite interesting. 
I was reading them before the program began today, and I'm, you kind of study this, these diaries. You can feel the mood of Srila Prabhupada. And of course, we've been reading these for the new people that are attending. Uh, we, we've gone through these diaries once in, in, it, in their entirety. The Jaladuta diary, which is this one here. Okay. So we've already completed that one. And we're on to the second section, which, which deals with the 66 primarily uh, pastimes of Srila Prabhupada, opening up uh, the matchless gift, 26 sec 2nd Avenue in New York City. And we're seeing how the movement it, as Hari Griva described it, the Hari Krishna explosion. So it was, it was uh, gradually unfolding and not without difficulty, as we've been reading. And Prabhupada was staying in that office uh, below Mishra's house or apartment, and he had no kitchen or bathroom. It was just an office. Can you imagine? Just living in this building in New York City. And then from there, he was robbed. After he was robbed, he thought, well, it's time to move from here. And he got an invitation from someone, a Paul Murray, I believe. And uh, <clears throat> he moved to the Bowery, 94 Bowery Street, which was between a, a group of bars and uh, slum area back then. So he moves there. And then he, he, he sees that this Paul Murray is taking acid and is disturbed and unpredictable and, and yelling at him a bit. This guy was just a punk kid, teenager, disrespectful, has no clue of spiritual life, but he's got an opinion. So Prabhupada here, you're, you're going to see as we read forward here, he's now contemplating what to do. Because again, he got robbed. So every place he's going, he's getting robbed and stolen and threatened. And he's surrounded with all these demoniac people. And he's got to, he still wants to stay on and try to spread the Krishna consciousness movement, despite all these difficulties. So the diaries do reveal how he was moving forward step by step, according to how he organized his time. And you should have uh, a book for that for yourselves. A book of organizing your time, like Prabhupada. And he had it divided down into book distribution and meetings and, and uh, other letters like that that he was sending out to very important people. Always optimistic that Krishna would help him to fulfill his mission to please his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. So we'll go to those readings now. We're at Tuesday, June 21st, 1966. June 21st, 1966. So you'll see, I always include a little bit of the handwriting. I don't always... Uh, show it all, but it's considered to be very auspicious just to see the pure devotees' written uh, notes, just to see the letters. So I always include a little bit there, and then the translation so that everyone can read it. On sunrise, 4.31 a.m., sunset, 7.31 p.m., moonset, 05 Chaturi, today I paid to Paul $5 for purchases. Carl paid me $30 for paying rent. Today, telephone conversation is made. I talked with Mr. Bogart and Mrs. LeBlanc. Inquired about Yolanda. Dr. Misra twice attempted, but there was no response. My telephone number code area is 212-226-4327. So great advancement. He's now got himself up, set up for some direct 
uh, communication with people with his own phone number. Paul's behavior, not very satisfactory. Eh? Yeah, not at all. He's taking LSDs completely uh, mundane. No letter received today. Ex income was $30, expenditure $5, and one letter written to Paragon Book Gallery. Wednesday, June 22nd. Sunrise, 4.32. Sunset, 7.33 p.m. Uh, moonset, 11.08. Panchami, today Paul was paid two twenty five for expenses, withdrawn from the bank $65 and sent to the landlady $100 by uh, check commission paid 25 cents. I guess it was a bank charge. Theosophical Lodge at 347 East 72nd kept one set of books on approval. My phone number, 226-4327, given to them. They will inform after consulting Madame Wadi of Bombay, who is now at New York. Bus fare, I spent 30 cents. I think it was 15 cents back and forth. Vijay Pundit, 15 cents. No letter received today. Institute of Religious and Social Studies at Broadway, 122 Street Junction, 6th floor, invited me to see at 10.30 a.m. With, with books. In the evening, there was a meeting. The attendance was 11, but the collection was only 750. That's about 73 cents per person. Not very much. In the evening was a meeting. And the book collection was a dollar, so it was eight fifty. Expenditures two twenty five, thirty five dollars, twenty five cents, thirty cents, thirty seven eighty. And on Thursday, June twenty third, nineteen sixty six, sunri sunrise was four thirty two AM. Sunset was seven thirty three PM. Moon sets 11.37. Shasti, today one of the books deposited with the director of the Institute of Religion and Social Studies Broadway and 122 Second Street Junction. It is settled that the director will directly deposit the value in the bank. Hmm. Subway and bus fare was 45 cents. Mike proposed to become a Vaishnava and married with his girlfriend. So that's Mukunda. He became Mike, what's his last name? Mike, Mike Grant? Today, while I was about to go Michael to Carl, Grant. yeah, thank you. Today, while I was about to go to Carl's place, Paul implored me that if he, if required, he would go away. This loft is mine. He's planning. Paul's not doing well. I was pleased pleased to hear all these from the young boy. Yeah, good riddance. So I stopped leaving of this place. P Carl took the trouble of bringing back my bags. So Prabhupada's being cautious about being robbed or stolen, his property. He hardly had anything, but whatever he had was very important his typewriter and his lit his scripts and other efforts he was doing to establish Krishna consciousness in America to be stolen all the time. Pathetic. Friday, June 24th, sunrise, 4.32 a.m., sunset, 7.33 p.m., moon sets. Saptami, today I applied for the post box Okay, so he's getting working to get himself set up. One letter posted to Brahmachari Mungal, Illinois, which we read at the last session. You can go to these classes, by the way, if you've missed them, and follow along with them progressively and catch up with everything we've been discussing for the last couple of years. Mangal Niloy deprecating his views that talk and cooperation could be raised only after his coming in this country. Hmm. 
In the morning, I saw Mike's loft. Paul appears to be a little changed. In the evening, there was a meeting. The attendance was about 12. The contribution was 640. Book collection was only a dollar. One Mr. Grand took one set of books. He desires to pay gradually. In the evening, I, I paid Paul one dollar for expenditure. The income was 740. Expenditure was a dollar, and Dr. Mishra informed about my tooth sticks. You can see that people are not being very supportive. And so, subsequently, if you go to Saturday, June, look at this. So Saturday, June 66, Sunday, June 66, and Monday, uh, the 27th of June, 1966. Maybe Prabhupada wasn't feeling well, but he doesn't log much in his diaries for obvious reasons that people are coming around. They're using him. They're abusing him, and they're not really serving. This will change. The change is about to come. The revolution is ready to explode next month. So sunrise was 432, sunset was 733, moonset was 05 Astami, June 26th, sunrise 430, sunset 7.33, moonset 0.30, Navami, and Monday, June 27th, sunrise 4.33, sunset 7.33, moonset 0.55, Dasami. And I'm going to show you one more picture that I took from the diary. A Prabhupada uh, on the subway. Just see. Prabhupada riding the subway by himself with his cane. And look at that jacket, his humility as a pure sannyasi, fully renounced to the mission of Lord Chaitanya and his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta. This is the proof that Prabhupada was 100% sold out to the Sankirtan mission of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. We're following in his footsteps. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. We'll move forward with the Adipo. <laughs> we'll move forward with the uh, chanting of Jaya Radha Madhava and then our wonderful discussion and reading led by the mountain man himself, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu in Twain Heart, California. Hari Paul. Are we there? Just waiting for the kirtan to appear or Venkat, are you there? Hello, Venkat. Jaswoda Nanana, Brother Jana Ranjana. Jaswoda Nanana, Brother Jana Ranjana. Jamona Tiro Bana Chari Jamona Tiro Bana Chari Jamona Tiro Bana Chari Jamona Tiro Gopi Jana Ballava Diri Varadhari Gopi 
गोपीजन बल्लभ गिरे बनधारी यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जय हम स्वाप परम हंस परिव्रा जगाचा जस्तरे श्री समाद अति धाम विसर श्री गोस्वामी भगवान की जय अनंत गौरी वैष्णव की जय रामाचार्य श्री हरिदास साहु की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत राधा सुवाटारी गौर भक्ति में जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपना शाम खंड राधा खंड गिरी वंदन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप धाम की जय गंगा माय की जाए जमुना माए की जाए द्वारका धाम की जाए स्वामी तो भक्तविंद की जाए और ग्लोरी सुधे समय और ग्लोरी सुधे समय थैंक यू वेरी मच ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ माय लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा द सन ऑफ वासुदेवा द ऑल प्रवेडिंग पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड आई ऑफर माय रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबियसेंसेस अनटु यू फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम 1 1 1 नारायण नमस्कृत नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चेबानोत्तम नरम चेबानोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास सरस्वती व्यास तथो जा मुदीर तथो जा मुदीर वन शुड अथ द मीन्स ऑफ कॉन्क्वेस्ट श्रीमद्भागवत आफ्टर आफरिंग रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबियसेंसेस टू द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एड नारायण टू to the nara narayana rishi who is the supermost human being three to the mother saraswati the goddess of learning then four to shrila vyasa deva the author from shrimad bhagavatam 124 welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on shrimad bhagavad gita as we do every week we will recite the few introductory verses from page 1 of the bhagavad gita that were introduced by shrila prabhupad himself in 1966 in new york we ask everybody either to join in or to carefully listen om agyana timirandhasya gnanan jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena I was born in the darkest ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale 
ಸ್ವಯಮಕ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ವಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಮಿಷನ್ ಟು ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಗಿವ್ ಮೀ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗುಣಾರಗುಣತ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೇತನ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಕನ್ವಿತ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಒಬೀಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಂಟು ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಸ್ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಒಬೀಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ರೂಪ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಸನಾತನ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ as well as Raghunath Das and Raghunath Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta and Srila Jeeva Goswami. I offer my respectful obeisances to Lord Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, along with Advaita Charya, Gadada, Srivast, and other associates. I offer my respectful obeisances to Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna, along with their associates, Shri Lalita and Vishaka. E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostuti O oh, my dear Krishna, you are the friend of the distressed and the source of creation. You are the master of the gopis and the lover of Radharani. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Tapta kanchana gorangi Radhe vrinda vaneshwari Vrishabhanu sute devi Pranamami hari priyem I offer my respects to Radharani whose bodily complexion is like molten gold and who is the queen of Vrindavana. You are the daughter of King Vrishabhanu and you are very dear to Lord Krishna. Vanchakalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindubhya evacha patitanam pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo namo namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord who can fulfill the desires of everyone, just like desire trees and who are full of compassion for the fallen souls. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We will read one or two verses from a very special book. Gita Dhyanam or meditation on the Bhagavad Gita from the Vaishnaviya Tantra Sar. This was quoted by Srila Prabhupada many times. Text number one. Om Parthaya Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayana Swayam ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಕರತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯ ಮಹದ್ಭಾರತ 
ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿಂ ಭಗವತಿಂ ಅಷ್ಟದಶಿಂ ಅಂಬತ್ವಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭಗವದ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ಓ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ವಿತ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪಾರ್ಥ ವಿಸ್ ಇಲಮಿನ್ ಬೈ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಎಂ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ and which was composed within the Mahabharata by the ancient sage Vyasa, O Divine Mother, the destroyer of rebirth, the shower of the nectar of Advaita, and consistent of 18 discourses upon Thee, O Gita, O Affectionate Mother, I meditate. It should be noted that this, according to some scholars, was compiled by Adi Shankarachari himself. That's what they say. the shrar of the nectar of advaita which is a misunderstanding on their parts again welcome everyone to this reading and discussion when we read bhagavad gita it should be noted that we read from the original 1972 macmillan edition which was approved directly by shula prabhupad and all translations purports and synonyms are from his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Today we'll be reading from chapter 11, text number 3 and 4. Text number 3. Evam etad yatatta Evam etad yatatta ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಮಿಚ್ಚಾಮಿಷ್ವರಂಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ that etat this yatatha as it is from you atmanam the soul parameshwara the supreme lord drashtum to see ichami i wish te you rupam form Aishwaram Divine, Purushottama, O Best of Personalities. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O Greatest of All Personalities, O Supreme Form, though I see here before me your actual position, I yet wish to see how you have entered into this cosmic manifestation. I want to see that form of yours, purport. The Lord said that because he entered into the material universe by his personal representation, the cosmic manifestation has been made possible and is going on. Now, as far as Arjuna is concerned, he is inspired by the statements of Krishna. But in order to convince others in the future, who may think that Krishna is an ordinary person, he desires to see him actually in his universal form, to see how he is acting from within the universe, although he is apart from it. Arjuna's asking the Lord's permission is also significant, since the Lord is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is present within Arjuna himself, Therefore, he knows the desire of Arjuna, and he can understand that Arjuna has no special desire to see him in his universal form, for he is completely satisfied to see him in his personal form of Krishna. But he can understand also that Arjuna wants to see the universal form to convince others. He did not have any personal desire for confirmation. Krishna also understands that Arjuna wants to see the universal form to set a criterion 
for in the future there would be so many imposters who would pose themselves as incarnations of God. The people, therefore, should be careful. One who claims to be Krishna should be prepared to show his universal form to confirm his claim to the people. <laughs> Text number four. Manyasi yadita chakyam. Manyasi yadita chakyam. Maya drashtum iti prabhu. Maya drashtum iti prabhu. Yogeshvara tato metvam. Yogeshvara tato metvam. Darshayatmana mavyayam. Darshayatmana mavyayam. Manyasi. If you think. Yadi. If. Tat. That. Shakyam. Able to see. Maya. By me. Drashtum to see. Iti thus. Prabhu, O Lord. Yogeshvara, the Lord of all mystic power. Tataha, then. Me unto me. Tvam, you. Darshaya, show. Atmanam, yourself. Avyayam, eternal. Translation. If you think that I'm able to behold your cosmic form, O oh my Lord, O oh Master of all mystic power, then kindly show me that universal self. Purport. It is said that one can neither see, hear, understand, nor perceive the Supreme Lord Krishna by the material senses. But if one is engaged in loving transcendental service to the Lord from the beginning, then one can see the Lord by revelation. Every living entity is only a spiritual spark. Therefore, it is not possible to understand, it's possible to see or to understand the Supreme Lord. Although as a devotee does not depend on his exclusive, on his speculative strength, rather he admits his limitations as a living entity and acknowledges Krishna's inestimable position. Arjuna could understand that for a living entity it is not possible to understand the unlimited infinite. If the infinite reveals himself, then it is possible to understand the nature of the infinite by the grace of the infinite. The word Yogeshvara is also very significant here because the Lord has inconceivable power. If he likes, he can reveal himself by his grace, although he is unlimited. Therefore, Arjuna pleads for the inconceivable grace of Krishna. He does not give Krishna's orders. Krishna is not obliged to reveal himself to anyone unless one surrenders fully in Krishna consciousness and engages in devotional service. Thus, it is not possible for persons persons who depend on the strength of their mental speculation to see Krishna. O Magyana Timiranda Syagnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shugurabe Namaham Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya 
ഭക്തി വേദന്തനാമിനെ പ്രസന്നായ പ്രശന്തായ തസ്മേ ശ്രീഗുരവേ നമഹ ഭഗവദ്വന്ദനം ഖാദ്യം ഗുരുവന്ദനപൂർവകം ക്ഷീരം ശർക്കരയുക്തം ഖദതേഹി വിശേഷത അദാനസ്ത്രീണം ദന്തേർ ഇതം യാചി പുനഃ പുനഃ ശ്രീമദ്രൂപദം ഭോജ ധുലിഷ്യാം ജന്മ ജന്മനി അംശോ ഭഗവതു സ്മ്യാഹം സദാസോസ്മി സർവത തൃപാപിക്ഷകോ നിത്യം തൃഷ്ട ഷട് കരോമിശ്വം ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണചേതന്യ പ്രഭോ നിത്യാനന്ദ ശ്രീയദ്വൈതഗാധരശ്രീവസരി ഗൗർഭക്തവൃന്ദം ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരി 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 രാമ ഹരി രാമ 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 ഹരി ഹരി ദർ ഇസ് എ ഫ്യൂ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പോയിൻസ് that are being raised by Srila Prabhupada in these purports, one of which is that persons who claim to either be incarnations or especially some people in India claim that they are God themselves, Prabhupada, let him show. Prabhupada says, the people therefore should be careful. One who claims to be Krishna should be prepared to show his universal form to confirm his claim to the people. When we were in South India, Mahamsa Swami brought up this exact point to Srila Prabhupada because in South India there was a very famous so-called Swami with a Jimi Hendrix haircut who was claiming that he was some kind of avatar, some kind of a divinely empowered being. When this was brought up to Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said, why doesn't he show his universal form? Of course, everybody knows he can't show his universal form because the whole thing was a bluff. But this is a very important point, that anybody can make any outlandish claim. Anybody can see any kind of nonsense. But Krishna gives the standard. Just like recently, somebody sent me a discussion on Facebook where somebody was attempting to criticize Srila Prabhupada, allegedly for saying that one should beat women or one should beat one's wife. And I saw, when I saw these discussions, I could see that these individuals had not carefully studied Srila Prabhupada's statements on these various issues. As says, has any one of you also may, given that quote in the fourth canto, where should a prophet as a woman should never be physically beaten or assaulted? Of course, that nobody could answer that. In other words, if one wants to make some outlandish claim or some crazy statement, they should be very careful. It's much more prudent to study the issues before opening their mouths rather than later. In Vrindavan, in 1972, during the Nectar of Devotion lectures, we saw one gentleman came to see Srila Prabhupada. He was very tall. He had a yellow silk dhoti, very long hair. I don't know if he was thinking that he was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had very fine tea locks, sandalwood. He came to see Prabhupada and offered his obeisances. And many times, Srila Prabhupada in his room, he would have his bead bag and he would look at the person. He would smile very patiently, very cool-headedly. He listened to this person for a few minutes. And he, we could see that he was still chanting on his beads and smiling. So finally, this person paid his obeisances and left. And Prabhupada <laughs> made a comment. This person is a complete sahaja. 
He thinks that he has become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Prabhupada was laughing. So anybody can think whatever they like. That this is natural in the material world. Prabhupada says, Atmavan Manyate Jagat. Everybody thinks of the world in terms of themselves. But the reality is, is we have the shelter of the Acharya. We have the shelter of Srila Prabhupada to understand how to understand Krishna. It's not done by scholarship, by academic studies, by great intelligence. In the Upanishads, there's a discrim. It says, Namedhaya Shrutaya. Even if one is highly intelligent, just like there's the Mensa Society for people with a very high quota of intelligence. Well, that is nice. That is good to be intelligent or very intelligent is a benediction. One is very fortunate if he's like that. But it is no guarantee of understanding Krishna. That is no guarantee of understanding a pure devotee. Nabahuna Shrutena, even if one has studied the four Vedas, just to study the Sanskrit language properly, takes just to pronounce it properly takes a considerable amount of dedication and study and time. But even if one has achieved that studied all the four Vedas, it is described Nabahuna Shrutena. There's no guarantee that just by studying the four Vedas, one will get the mercy of Krishna. Then how does one understand? This is very similar to these people that would come to Srila Prabhupada and asked Srila Prabhupada, can you show me Krishna? And on one occasion, Prabhupada said, yes. And he quoted that verse from the Padma Purana, Atasa Krishna Namadhi, Nabhavet Gramendriyaihi, Sevan Muke Hijivadu, Swayamevas Puratyadaha. That you can understand Krishna, but not with these senses. It requires special senses. It just like if you want to go and become a detective, you, you don't just come from high school and say, I want to be a detective in here. It doesn't work that way. You have to have certain qualifications. You have to have certain training. And you have to develop some experience. Not just because you want to become a detective does not necessarily mean that right away you are a detective. Similarly, if one wants to understand Krishna, one has to understand how to develop love of Krishna. That verse explains it. That Namadi means the name of Krishna, the pastimes of Krishna, the form of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna cannot be understood with these indriyas, these senses, these material senses. You cannot understand Krishna that way. Then how do you understand? Sevan Mukhe Hijivadu. You have to render service to Krishna, starting with the tongue. Jiva means the tongue, to taste food stuff that is offered to Krishna and to speak of Krishna. Also to hear Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is a very important point. Then Krishna says, Swayame Vaspuratyadaha. Then Krishna can be revealed. This is the process. That's why it is important to regularly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Regularly. Not simply, oh, I read the book, that's it. Now I can do all nonsense. No. Nope. That's not the system. Very important point. Some people think that by material intelligence, they can understand Krishna. Well, material intelligence is very good due to your past karma. You've got good brain, good discrimination, good power, good for you. Now dedicate that brain to understand who is the original brain, who is the most powerful brain, who control and makes this whole universe. The other day, a devotee sent me a little clip from the internet of somebody was saying, that the scientists are trying to figure out what created, what preceded the Big Bang. Well, you can learn all that very nicely from the Bhagavatam. 
Everything is explained there. The whole scientific process, how the material nature gets agitated by the glance of Mahavishnu. And then the, the karma of the living entities come out. And then there was all of the different sequences described in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the second canto, third canto of Bhagavatam. It is described there. Even before the living entities are, are manifested again. So this is very important. That knowledge is there, but one has to receive it from proper authority, from parampara. Otherwise, it's likely that one will be misled. One will misunderstand. And this is what we see with upstarts or people who basically have a very dangerous attitude when they try to study the pure devotee. There's a statement in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, Tejiyasam Nadoshaya. For those who are very powerful, there is no fault. There is no fault. Personality like Brahma, Shiva, very powerful personalities. One has to learn very carefully not to insult or criticize such persons. Because sometimes people will find fault with a pure devotee, and that is very dangerous. There was a conversation with Srila Prabhupada on December 10th, 1975 in Vrindavan. December 10th, 1975 in Vrindavan. It was quoted on page 35 of the little booklet, Our Living Guru. It's called, Who is That Rascal? In a morning walk conversation recorded on December 10th in Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada turns this claim on its head. The notion that Krishna's pure successors are subject to contamination. Disciple, I was recently told by one devotee that the Acharya does not have to be a pure devotee. Prabhupada, what? Disciple, that the Acharya does not have to be a pure devotee. Prabhupada, who is that rascal? Who said? Who is that rascal? The Acharya doesn't have to be a pure devotee. Disciple. Nitai said it. He said that Lord Brahma is the Acharya, the Brahma Sampradaya, but yet is sometimes afflicted by passion. So therefore he's saying that it appears that the Acharya does not have to be a pure devotee. Prabhupada, he manufactured his idea. Therefore he is a rascal. Therefore, he is a rascal. Nitai has become an authority. The sample, no, actually, he said that he thought, proper. he thought something rascal dumb, and he's expressing that. Therefore, he is more rascal. These things are going on. As soon as he reads some books, he becomes acharya, whatever rascal he may be. These things are to be seen in this way, that such an exalted person, he sometimes becomes passionate. So how much we shall be careful? That is the instruction. It is not that the Acharya has become passionate. Therefore, I shall become passionate. I am a strict follower of the Acharya, these rascals say. So this is a very important point. We see some people, they try to criticize Prabhupada for some of his statements, but they don't take the time to bother to analyze all the other statements that Prabhupada made on the topic. That's like this issue of women. When Prabhupada says no one should never the women should never be beaten or assaulted, that they very conveniently forget. That they, they purposely forget. But they'll find fault and misunderstand and misquotes some other statement from Prabhupada. So people should be very, very careful. We've been warned. By the Srimad Bhagavatam, the eleven canto, Acharyam Mam Vijaniyam Na Vamanina Karichit. That one should never be envious and neglectful of the Acharya. That is the bona fide Acharya. Not self appointed Acharya or voted in Acharya. That is nonsense. Bona fide Acharya, like Srila Prabhupada, one should be very careful. Never be envious. Never become envious of the Acharya. Sarva Deva Mayo Guru, because the Acharya is the sum total of all dummy gods. 
This is a very important point. Devotees have to be very careful not to speculate upon the position of a pure devotee in these statements. One has to go deep and understand properly what is the proper understanding of the position of the pure devotee, the bona fide acharya, the liberated soul, what is a nitya siddha, an eternally liberated soul. This is very important. Otherwise, one can be misled by false propaganda. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Excellent. Yes. Very superficial perspective on our philosophy. And uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, Prabhupada referred to it as whimsical. Very whimsical approach to something so valuable as the opportunity to associate with a pure devotee, Acharya, like Srila Prabhupada, that we're reading about in his diaries, how he manifested this Sankirtan mission according to the order of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his guru. Because in India, there's so many people, and I was listening to a recent lecture by Srila Prabhupada, who was mentioning exactly this point about there are so many people, especially in Bengal, that are claiming to be God. So why? Because if you become recognized as a incarnation of God, or you become recognized as a representative of God, then along with that, you get so many followers. And with that, you enter into an economic platform of stability where they take care of you. You don't have to work. You just have to talk. Oh, I think I'll talk today. So Prabhupada is explaining here in the Gita that if anybody is claiming to be a representative of God, as you mentioned, or an incarnation of God, he has to show the universal form. That's a qualification. Of course, they can't. They're bluffing. And uh, they're fraudulent. So this is going on in the name of religion all over the world. And Prabhupada also told us that you should not try to see Krishna. I passed, sent out that lecture for everyone to listen to which is October 22nd, 1972, in Vrindavan, India, where Prabhupada mentions, and please, if you get a chance, go to that lecture. I posted it up on Prabhupada Disciples Association uh, Facebook group for, for people to, to tune into that. It's an amazing lecture, and I was mentioning to Krishna Kata that just that one lecture, of 32 minutes, I believe it's long. The whole philosophy exp is explained pretty much in one lecture, just like the Vedic teachings are done in succinct uh, shruta uh, verses that explain the whole truth of the matter very simply for the open, sincere devotee looking to go back home, back to Godhead in the human form of life. Very simple. But it's easily misrepresented by many people for their own personal motives, which is unfortunate. And this is going on in all types of groups, inside of ISKCON, outside of ISKCON, in all different types of religions, to be in the spiritual business like there's so many Christian preachers that develop their congregations. They end up living in 
multi-million dollar estates with private jets and all kinds of material facility on the justification that they're preaching the message of Jesus to others. So it's this has been going on forever from time immemorial. So much cheating. And prop I'd refer to as the cheaters and the cheated. So uh Prabhupada said, do not try to act in such a way to see Krishna. Mistake. But try to act in such a way that Krishna will take notice of you. That's how his spiritual master taught him. That first you look at yourself and you concentrate on building your own spiritual character your character. So a thought, reap an action, Stephen Covey. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. So if you sow the habit of chanting the holy name as part of your daily regimen, if you sow the habit of daily reading the books of Srila Prabhupada, if you sow the habit of associating with bona fide disciples. If you sow the habit of trying to present Krishna consciousness to other people through Prabhupada's authentic books, then you'll reap a certain destiny that Krishna will take notice of you. And in this way, you'll please Srila Prabhupada because it is by the mercy of the spiritual master. We, I talk to Krishna Kata about this regularly. Our whole purpose is to please Srila Prabhupada. That's the function of this group. And we're trying to monitor how to please Prabhupada based on how he taught us, either in his books or in association with other devotees that were in his association that can share this information to the Prabhupada disciples in this group. And all the disciples are the same. We're all eternal servants of Krishna. And Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna Kata, that what is the qualification for a person to get Krishna's mercy? And Krishna says, all of them, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. All of them. So the more we surrender our time, our time is the most valuable asset. So the more we surrender our time into the service of Krishna, and Yashoda Nandana made a very interesting point, that it is through the proper use of the ears and the tongue, the, the ability to speak and to taste, and the ability to listen. If we practice this discipline of constantly keeping an association with Srila Prabhupada through these mediums and through the teachings of how to utilize the human form of life for the practice of bhakti yoga, we will get the mercy of Prabhupada and Krishna in this lifetime. This is a guarantee from him. And so we're moving forward like that with our group and we're very thankful for all of you who are attending these programs. I see we have a very nice attendance today. And probably with the internet uh, YouTube channel, we might have over 60, 70 people attending the class of reading and discussion today. So very encouraging to see people coming to this realization that association with Prabhupada and Prabhupada's bona fide disciples is the secret on how to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, and then we'll move forward with our group. We've got Janus Priya, Mahananda, Krishna Kata, Neo Shama, and the rest of us. We can have a discussion on these topics. Yashoda Prabhu, please. Thank you. I just want to make a point here, and I know I've made that point before, um, this issue of listening to proper sources, 
because we see that some persons are very fond of making propaganda, even within the movement. They make oh. different types of propaganda to forward certain points. But it's important that what they present should be correct, not false propaganda. And Srila Prabhupada is explaining this nicely in a conversation with Shama Sundar, I believe. This was in, uh, let me see here. It's in a book, Dialectical Spiritualism. It's a discussion with Shama Sundar about Mao Tse Tung. And they were talking about the communist system. Prabhupada says, anyway, the Russia is supposed to be the leader of the communistic idea. Ribati Nandana, they don't accept anymore. There is Mao. Prabhupada, similarly, after some time, he will not be accepted. That is my proposition. As Russia is not accepted now, some days later, he will not be accepted. Similarly, your also theory will fail. That is my proposition. Because I challenge that your theory is not perfect. Because Russia's theory she was not perfect, it has failed. Similarly, I say your theory is also imperfect. Very nice. Similarly, I say your theory is also imperfect. Therefore, it will fail. Anything imperfect will fail. That is my proposition. Rebati Nandana. His propaganda is that it is perfect because it has made the Chinese people, Prabhupada, propaganda. By propaganda, you can do anything. That is different thing, but fact is fact. If your theory is not perfect, you make however propaganda, it will fail. So this is a very important point because we saw different propaganda after his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada departed in November of 1977. And we're not going to go review all of these false ideas and false hoaxes. It was nicely described by one mastermind of that system as a myth. In Topanga Canyon on the 3rd of December 1980, Topanga Canyon, California, it was admitted this whole idea that Prabhupada has appointed living gurus was a myth. It's a falsehood. And the whole organization has gone with that falsehood for 46 years. That's why that is the root cause of all the problems. That is the root cause of all the difficulties. This is a very important point. And Prophet explains, by propaganda, you can do anything. That is a different thing. But fact is fact. If your theory is not perfect, you make however propaganda will fail. The only thing that will succeed is to reestablish Prabhupada as the actual Acharya of his movement, not just Siksha. They have to dive deep in Prabhupada's instruction, look at every statement that Prabhupada ever made about Siksha, Diksha, instruction, discipline, succession, analyze it and discuss it. I don't care how much time it takes. I don't care how difficult that may be for some people. It has to be done. Those who are a little intelligent, they will do it. Those who may be lazy, those who may be motivated, those who may be misled, that may be a little difficult for them to whom it may concern. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. That's a very, very valuable point. And for all of us that are on this uh, uh, Zoom uh, meeting, we're all exposed to propaganda, especially in these, here in the Western side of the world, the media is bought by the different political parties for propagating uh, propaganda about one group against another group. We're, that's all we're exposed to is untruths. And it's very interesting to note that after Prabhupada's departure, there was a conspiracy formulated by a group of God brothers, specifically, and Krishna Kata is a witness to this practically, 
after Romeshwar uh, took the role of uh, initiating Guru on as a, a Ritvik on behalf of Srila Prabhupada and how he was condemned by Tamal Krishna and other people for doing that. And they told him, if you don't uh, listen to us and do what we say, we'll kick you out of the movement. And, and Krishna Das, Krishna Kata Prabhu was also part of that whole initiation system that went on. And he has got practical experience in this area. First class, first hand experience. And it was interesting to note that he was talking to me, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, about, about this topic with Govinda Dasi, who is a Prabhupada disciple. She was a secretary of Prabhupada's for uh, two years. And she was with Romeshwar when he came back from meeting with Kirtananda or Tamal in New Vrindavan, when he, he got back to LA, he broke down in, in, in anxiety, crying, because he did not want to do that, but he was being forced by this propaganda machine that they had created that would legitimize an illegitimate act by them, which was taking the position of so-called Uttama Ar Adhikari Diksha Gurus. So quite an interesting history. Maybe you could comment and we'll have, we'll answer some questions. I see someone, some Bhakta there, Jad is his name. We'll ask, we'll get you later. Krishna Kata, maybe you could speak for a minute and we'll go to, through our panel. Hare Krishna, Vishvakarma, Hare Krishna, Yashoda Nandana. Thank you so much for another spot on perfect class and and so much realization uh from these verses about you know arjuna wanting krishna to show him his universal form because he knew there would be so many rascals and we're seeing this happen in Prabhupada's perfect movement that will always be perfect and pure even if it appears to somehow have some contamination uh uh, uh as the narrative because that's really what we're talking about here is who controls the narrative. So by getting Prabhupada's original books out, we control Prabhupada's narrative, the pure devotee's narrative. So we our our group is is fully working towards making that happen. And there's so many other uh, Prabhupada disciple groups uh, that are doing the same thing. So this is the alignment. This again is the is the is the meditation that. Lord Chaitanya's movements going forward, regardless of all of this false narrative, it's going forward as the pure devotee gave it to us. And just to clarify a little bit about what you said regarding Ramaswar, he he got summoned to Dallas after he gave oh, okay. a yeah to Dallas uh, after he gave a bona fide uh, initiation according to Prabhupada's instructions and. Uh, I have lots of detail about how that went down. And uh, everyone in, in all of New Dorka could tell how dejected he was when he came back. And so when I was telling this, my my witnessing of, of from my view of what was happening, I was on the phone with Govinda Dasi. And she said, I was in Ramaswar's quarters and he was bawling and crying, like uncontrollably with tears just coming down his face and saying that I arrived to speak with Tamal and he had a pre-written resignation letter with a signature line for Ramaswar to sign if you don't follow this zonal Acharya system. Can you imagine? Again, these are, these are you know, facts. She was there. She witnessed what he was going through. So, you know, I've spoken to other uh, Prabhupada disciples that were initiated in that group. And so much happened in the 1980s that it was like a whirlwind. There was It was impossible to grasp and hold on to what had happened that was pure and, and, and service to Prabhupada. 
at that moment, Ramasura was serving Prabhupada's order to be my representative and give initiation, diksha initiation, on behalf of Prabhupada. Chanted on my beads. He gave me the most amazing spiritual name. And it all went away with the Keith Ham situation. It all went away with everyone that was spinning out of control. And so, Yashoda, you say it very nicely. Everyone was so ambitious and like a Godia Moth part two. They were just grabbing onto temples and zones and 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 just pretty much just bulldozing their way around and doing what they want. They came up to Toronto. They stole Prabhupada's Murti, as you told me, Vishwakarma, Karma, his shoes. So, so much uh, me, 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 right? All because of envy of the spiritual master, of the pure devotee. They were envious of him. They wanted to become him. And they saw the opportunity and they grabbed a hold of whatever they could. Like a thief takes whatever isn't nailed down, they just take it. And that's what happened. And so we move on with the true narrative, which is Prabhupada's books, the unalloyed, unadulterated, unedited books, because those will prevail. That is what we're all attracted to. That's why we all come to these uh, live uh, classes. That's why we watch them again sometimes. <laughs> There's so much nectar that I sometimes will, at nighttime before going to bed, I'll watch the same one from last week on YouTube, just because it's potent and powerful. And that is Krishna's potency and powerful uh, Shakti coming through these classes. And and our, you know, our base is increasing. We're getting more and more people attracted. And so, you know, I appreciate you calling on me, but I just wanted to clarify that that is what happened. Uh, and uh, Govinda Dasi encouraged me to tell the story. Um, it's it's a fact, and and it's sad, but uh, at the same time, we have to we have to persevere forward. Look at all this that we're seeing in the diary. Prabhupada suffered so much. He he persevered through so much calamity and and obstruction and and just. He must have just been astonished by how much deviation he saw in human society with all the drug taking and the theft, he, you know, all these things. So I, I love when you read the diary because it really gives us an, a glimpse into the, the pure devotee's surrender to his spiritual master. And that's exactly who we are, is we are surrendered to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for letting me speak. Hare Krishna. Oh, excellent. So thank you for that clarification as well. I see we have Mahananda Prabhu on the call today. And uh, I wanted to ask him if he, if, if he has a microphone, if he would like to share some of his realizations and understandings with the group. Mahananda Prabhu, are you there? Huh? I don't know. I saw it. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Mahananda, you've got that beautiful picture of the uh, uh, <clears throat> creation on the cover. Maybe you don't have access to the microphone. Nile Shama, I see you're with us. How are you? Glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. All right. Uh, very nice uh, class, very nice uh, uh, topic, and uh, the topic, if you were to if you were to stick to this, is that Prabhupada over here warns us about who to accept as God. Yeah. But on a on a other level, we need to also understand who we need to accept as a spiritual master. So, uh, what has been explained by uh, Krishna Kata Das in the 80s, Prabhuji, this still goes on in today's discord because mm -hmm. I have heard it with my own ears is oh. that when somebody wants to get initiated by some other guru from an other temple, they face huge problems of getting that letter. Remember, you need a letter from the temple president saying that you're in good standing before you can be initiated by any of these fake gurus. And mm -hmm. I've heard with my own ears that th there was this uh, uh, Prabhu who had come from uh, Mira Road in Mumbai 
and he wanted to get initiated by uh, somebody in Vrindavan and uh, they would not give him any letters, you see. So this grabbing of disciples, this grabbing of temples, this grabbing of uh, uh, what you call um, uh, kingdoms of theirs is very much prominent even today. They are more subtly done than what they did in the 80s because they thought that they could per perpetrate this propaganda eternally, you know, at least until their lifetimes, you see. But everything went catastrophically down. So now it is done on a very subtle level, but it is still done. Mm -hmm. So just like how we talk about that, who should we use or who should we uh, consider as God? And we need to be, it should be equally important for us to know that who we should treat as the spiritual master who will take us to that original God, you see? And until and unless we are not uh, in capable hands or a proper travel agent, Remember, uh, a guru, guru, spiritual master is a, a travel agent who will take us from the material platform to the spiritual platform. Okay, and if we don't have the proper one, it's not going to take us home, back home, back to God. Definitely not. Uh, forget back home, but even not liberation from this material world. So we will be getting entwined more and more. Talking about professional speakers, which Yashoda Nandan Prabhu was talking about, you know. There are plenty of professional speakers who use background music, who use musicians, who use stuff. It has crept into ISKCON as well. I can show you so many uh, disciples of these fake gurus who utilize these, uh, what you call, sensual um, uh, background paraphernalia to make themselves very uh, present, uh, presentative. Because remember, when we are in, in the material world, we are going to be attracted to anything which is pleasing to our senses. So when he's a good singer, when there's a good background music uh, going on as he's doing the pravachan, you know, people get attracted to such things. And this is exactly what they're doing. But as uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Until and unless we are not blessed with that proper intelligence, we will not know who is the real spiritual master. We will not know who is the real, uh, what is the real truth. Till that time, we will be circulating. Brahmande, Brahmande, Brahmite, Kono Bhagyavanji, Guru Krishna Kripa Pai, Bhakti Lata Beach. So the idea is keep your intelligence. Do not surrender your intelligence. Surrender through your intelligence, as Prabhupada says. So ask questions, and I would really like to know what Bhakta. Uh, Jad has a question about because queries should be given more priorities so that we can all learn from everybody's queries. Hare Krishna. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, that's perfect. Uh, we will move to that and find out a bit about this new Prabhu, Bhakta Jad. Prabhu, you've got your hand up. Where are you from? Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisance. It's all grace to Prabhupada. I, I live in France, Prabhu, uh, oh, south France. of France, a small town called Saint-Étienne. And okay. uh, I know Srila Prabhupada for, it's been six years now, is everything I have, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to preach somehow or other by distributing books. That is my life and soul, actually. And I really appreciated the lecture concerning... Uh, the false gods, people posing as gods. I really like the story of the false Mahaprabhu, <laughs> gods of Prabhupada. I can only imagine this rascal. But I have a practical question. Yes. So many Westerner people, they are, we can say, innocent mm -hmm. and they can fall victim to bogus gurus who preach yes. using the Vedas, the Gitas, posing themselves as God. I know two of them. And my question is this, how should we deal with such people? Should we be like direct, you are following rascal? Or should we do step by step? You know, you chant Hare Krishna, you read some Prabhupada books. I'm asking this question because we, I, we do not, uh, can we interfere their face? Because if we say directly the rascal, maybe they will quit Krishna consciousness. But at the same time, if we do not preach the real thing, 
they will have some confusion. So I would like to know how to deal with such innocent people who follow rascal people. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, Shoda, to give a response. I'll give a quick response for you, Prabhu. When you try to share information with people, that's an art. It's 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 an art of understanding, of compassion. And each person is unique in their own world of illusion, let's say. So you have to become expert in studying the situation. Always be careful to listen. Try to understand what their, where their confusions are, what the problems are, and then pray to Krishna to give you the expert ability to be able to touch them with understanding of the truth from Srila Prabhupada. We are parrots. We have to repeat what Prabhupada has taught us to them. And that takes expertise. Be smart. Be intelligent. Be compassionate. Be friendly. You have to build friendship with people. You, you, have, to, you have to build trust with people. And then you can have a chance then to explain to them the truth of the matter and test them. How do you do that? Well, these are talents, these are skills that you have to develop if you want to make devotees. Like I talk about this to our group. Sure, it's great that they sell all these books, but they have no devotees. They sell a hundred million books and the temples are empty in America, except for a few people. Of course, there's going to be a few. We've got to expect that. But the fact of the matter is, if everyone had stuck to the program that Prabhupada had introduced back in 1977 for us, can you imagine how big this movement would really be now as compared to it dissolving in front of our very eyes due to sectarianism and misrepresentation? This is a great tragedy. So use Prabhu, getting back to what I was saying, you can ask for advice from us, how we should approach a thing, but you have to use your intelligence. You have to pray for mercy from Krishna. You have to work hard on your own character, set good example, and then you'll become potent. Potency comes from practice. You practice what you preach, and then you'll get the expertise that's necessary to deal with these people, however they come up. Nilesh, I know you've got your hand up, but we're going to have to finish up here. But please, I know you want to say something. Go ahead, and then we'll get your show to speak, and we'll end the program. Yes, Prabhu. Nilesh Shama. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. Very, very good question. Very uh, practical day-to-day -day question. Uh, Prabhuji, this is what I would recommend to you. Remember, yeah. is that we are not on the platform of Srila Prabhupada's where we can directly go and say, he's a rascal. Prabhupada yeah. had absolute authority. So remember what, with what position we are in. We are still struggling with this material world. We are still very much a conditioned souls ourselves. The best way to go about is to give real life analogies. You see, I don't know how it is in France, but in, in the United States right now, there are so many media outlets who were considered like NPR, who were considered to be unbiased. And now you can see that the CEOs are all under huge pressure to acknowledge that they have never been unbiased. They have been totally a biased uh, source of uh, media. So how we approach this uh, delicate issue is we cannot ridicule them openly. We got to approach it in a very subtle manner, but a very strong manner and in an unapologetic manner. Remember, we got to teach the person according to the language he understands. First, whoever you are preaching to, understand what level he is at and try to talk to him at that language and give him some analogies. And in that particular perspective, you can attract him more and more towards it 
and then give him a constant dose of Prabhupada's original messages. And let purity be thy force. Prabhupada has told us this constantly, is that no other thing will help you but purity. The more pure you give that message, the more unadulterated the message is from Srila Prabhupada. And I guarantee you, Krishna, within you, Prabhupada will listen to you through the medium of the Paramatma. He will instruct you and guide you accordingly. And you will see a lot of good results. Hare Krishna. Perfect. You showed Anandana Prabhu, please. If you I, give I, us uh, some last okay. thoughts. Yeah, that to that cool. devotee there that from France, merci beaucoup, Prabhu. Tes commentaires ont été très appréciés. I'm telling him, thank you very much, Prabhu. Your comments are very much appreciated. Um, uh, with regards to our movement and what has happened, I just want to give a quote here from Prabhupada. This is fairly brief, but it's very important. This is from a room from a conversation in Vrindavan on September 26, 1976. September 26, 1976 in Vrindavan. Prabhupada, I was living with servant and two sons, so I helped to start, took from my friends, I collected some money, and so other important members said, why Abai Babu is living separately? He should be the president of the Bombay. I never said, but they said. I was living separately. Then Prabhupada requested, I mean to say, pleaded on my behalf so many things. He said three words. It is better that he is living outside your company. He will do when time will come. He will do himself everything. You haven't got to recommend him these very words. Then it says, Krishna require any president or any GBC. He's giving chance to everyone. That's all. Otherwise, thousands of presidents and thousands of GBC may come and go. His work will go on. Krishna is complete himself. He does not require anyone's help. That is Krishna. Say he to pracha. One who has got life, he can preach. One is dead, what he can do. Uh, with regards to the comment of what is the proper approach to take, when we preach to various persons, if you're preaching to different devotees, sometimes it's best to take the approach to avoid discussing these issues with them because they're not sufficiently educated or understand the philosophy properly. You can just encourage them to chant because Sanatan Goswami recommended Shravanam Neva Kartavyam. One should never hear from a non Vaishnavas. So those devotees who are not behaving properly like Vaishnavas or more like politicians and duplicitous persons and in living in this bubble of falsehood and propaganda, it may not be very helpful to confront these people. Best that you just give them a book from Prabhupada or just wish him the best and chant Hare Krishna. If they're serious, let him come to this class in here. Let him come to our websites. Let him come on Facebook to our Facebook page, the Prophet Disciples Association, if they're serious. If they're simply interested in a Lassi and Samosa Sampradaya, then let him go. That's okay. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Prabhu. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Lassi Samosa Sampradaya. <laughs> It's a very close relative of the Rupi Anuga Sampradaya. The Rupi Anuga Sampradaya and the Lassiamosa Sampradaya are like two, you know, very close relatives. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have, have you all with us today and uh, very enlivening for everyone to give their insights and realizations in a shared environment. Like I said, we're a non-censored group and we want to stay focused on our philosophy and the wonderful opportunity that we all have to surrender together in the service of protecting Prabhupada's legacy for humanity into the future of this human society. And this is a very important mission. 
Well, let's move forward with the chanting. We'll see you all tomorrow morning at the same time for Srimad Bhagavatam class. Very wonderful opportunity to hear the scriptures from Prabhupada's Delhi Bhagavatams, the 1962 edition. Wonderful. We'll move forward. I think, with, Hare Krishna uh, Prabhuji. Uh, I think yes. uh, Yashoda Nandan Prabhu should make a trip to France and help this Prabhuji because he speaks so French so fluently. He can be a spear in that movement too. <laughs> well, I, I've just given him my email on the screen there. He can communicate there. He can communicate yeah. with moi. C'est correct. Yes. I'm telling him he can communicate with me if he likes by email. We we okay. have uh, we have a, also a very strong outlet in the Spanish world in Mexico with Krishna Kishore. So we're gradually infiltrating Moving around. The, the material Moving world. around. Yeah, getting our programs going. It's it's steady, slow but steady wins the race. So we'll keep going and we're looking forward to come visit you sometime in Florida somewhere, yes. Have Kirtan and meet some of the people you're dealing with and try to help them uh, become enthused to participate with us. That's that's the Absolutely. Idea. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we'll cook this some nice doll for you. So thank you everyone. Wonderful. Let's let's go to the uh, uh, <clears throat> the Kirtan, Kirtan Prabhu. And then we'll have the bunch of kalpa and the close. A quick thing. question, Yashoda Prabhu, and the Prabhu, do you travel? Not much. My health yeah. does not no. allow me right now to travel so much. Okay. We'll keep Very going. As things things will turn around for us. Kirtan, please. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vashadi Gaurabhakta Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vashati Gaurabhakta Bhutta Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.
Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord who can fulfill the desires of everyone just like desire trees and who are full of compassion for the fallen souls. Hare Krishna. Thanks everybody for participating. Merci beaucoup. Bhakta de France là-bas. Essaye de nous rejoindre encore. I'm thanking the devotee from France, thanking him, and please come back again. Vijay Pandit Prabhu, come va, come va. Bene, grazie, molto bene. Ah, tutte le glorie, so a divina grazia, Srila Prabhupada. Vivo, <laughs> tutte le glorie, su divina grazia. <laughs> bella, bella, arrivo. Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalam Sri Guram Vaishnav Vangsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tang Sajivam Sadaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya